Hi guys, welcome back to another Yonah Mountain adventure. Uh, you join us today, I'm back up in the southern uplands, uh, out in the Battlestar Galactica. I've made some fantastic modifications to it already. There's already been quite a bit of progress to the stealth camper. I'll show you that a little bit further along. Um, I've got the um, All Powers R600 and solar panel. I think it's a bit wishful thinking bringing the solar panel, if I'm being honest, because it's murky and basically crap weather but anyway that doesn't stop us at all um i've got some great food to cook up um i've got some beautiful scottish rolls i've just getting from moffat which is where i am and i'm heading a little bit further inland and i'm just about to go and find a perfect pitch up by a reservoir um and um we're gonna get the on and up i've got loads of different things to show you so uh, with no further ado i'm gonna concentrate on these roads because they're a little bit mental and uh, we'll see you a little bit further along the way. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, if you haven't already been to this area, the Southern Uplands, I've mentioned this in previous videos, it really is the, 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 the jewel in the crown of, uh, of Scotland. It's a real hidden gem like. A lot of people bypass it to go to the Highlands, but honestly, man, this place is unbelievable. Um, the, the roads are great driving roads, great the motorbikers love it, um, but they are narrow and very, very windy as well, so do take care on the roads. You've got Greymare's Tail, which is a 600 foot valley drop waterfall. You've got nesting eagles, you've got all kinds of fantastic things going on in this particular area as well. And uh, I'm heading down past St Mary's Lock, uh, and then I'm going to head up to, uh, um, up to a reservoir. Um, which feeds the whole of the uh, the southern uplands, and um, it's just an amazing place. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stop off down here. There's a little cafe. I was talking to the woman who owns it. She was a, I forget her name now. Sharon, I think it was, the last time I was here, and uh, it's under new management. And this whole area is going to be trying to get it opened up to allow people to camp here and enjoy the beautiful beautiful place. And have loads of amenities. And the cafe's gonna, apparently going to be doing fantastic Scottish breakfasts. So I'm looking forward to that. I might even nip in and see if we can get a cover. But uh, otherwise, let's go and find my spotter. Eh? Fantastic. Ah, oh, this is what it's all about, isn't it? What a place, this is St Mary's Lock. Uh, and it just happens to be absolutely as calm as can be. The lock's just like glass. It's an, a fantastic place to come and uh, camping is permitted along certain parts uh, of the lock. Um, there's nobody here today, this is midweek, but uh, wow, the uh, looks quite atmospheric, doesn't it? What a place. I can he spot for fishing, you can go and uh, see John, the lock keeper, and he'll give you a permit for £10 for 24 hours fishing. And uh, it's pretty good, my mate, good mate Mountain Mick, y'all know Mountain Mick. He, last time he was here, he caught a couple of decent trout. Can he spot? Right before it starts absolutely pissing down, we're going to head a little bit further up the lock here. And um, there's a little bit of a landmark. It's an old AA box, I think from something like 1912 or something like that. Anyway, hang on left there, and then we'll head up to the reservoir. We'll go and find my pitch. And I think um, hopefully we can get in situ before it absolutely lashes down, because it's definitely threatening. And uh, we'll uh, try out one of my new modifications onto the old stealth camper. All right, let's go for it. Well, we've got a canny spot here. Absolutely brilliant. This is a uh, mega reservoir. And this feeds the southern uplands from what I can gather. And by all accounts, half decent fishing as well. The actual dam is just over there. And uh, I've got a pretty, pretty good spot here, as you can see. Quite flat. And the access road's just up there. 
So this is going to be absolutely perfect, this. What I'm going to do, I'll try and show you here, is I've now got an awning. I'm just going to put it up, attached to the top, and put it that way. So we'll be looking out over the reservoir. And it's actually nice and calm, but it is spitting on a little bit. So let's see if we can get this tarp up. Um, it's, a ver it's the first time I've put, I haven't done anything with this tarp yet, I'll show you. Right, we've got a power supply there, but what I've done is underneath, well, I'll show you the setup in a minute, like, but uh, underneath here, I've got me, uh, here's my pools. There's a tarp. And then in here, let's see if I can get it. Uh, bit tight fit, let's get it out. I've got some, uh, cordage and these are the new suction cups I'll show you how this works in a minute well anyway the idea anyway so the idea here is I've got my suction cups which you can see there and it comes with a carabiner on it as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to suction cup them to the roof and that's going to hold the top in place. Oh, and just in case you're wondering what I'm going to be using to actually put this thing up, I bought some of these uh, some of these twist twist and lock poles so they can go up there adjustable. So they'll be absolutely ideal. I'll put the link in the description for the top. The top was something like eight quid. The suction cup something about like six quid, and I think these were like sixteen quid something like that. I'll put the links in. But anyway, let's see how this thing goes. Maiden voyage. Let's go for it. Well, there we go. I don't know how sturdy this thing is, but it's up. And actually, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Certainly given a good good bit of shelter, that's for sure. I'm gonna get my seat sat down here and that's gonna protect us from the weather. So guys, what I've done is, I put the suction cups onto the roof and carabined them through. The one on the back, I'll just swing it around here so you can see what I've actually had to do here. I've attached it to the glass on there. Now obviously I want access to the driver's door. So I've just attached that to the window on that one and then just there I've attached another suction cup with a carabiner holding out that side now the idea being I've done it like that because it'll give some runoff as you can see so when it starts raining which it will come down the roof run off the other side absolutely spot on Oh yes, that'll do me, <laughs> oh fantastic. So this is um, one of the modifications, which is the awning. Obviously it's completely makeshift. It's not a professional type of setup, but you know what? I'm just going for functionality basically. Uh, and this works if I wanted to keep the rain off us, this will do the business. And I could attach at the front and extend it further that way. Uh, we'll see, but for the time being, I think that works absolutely champion. Really, really good. I'm gonna have myself a cupper. Um, I've got my little uh, little box down here. I've got my cup, my knife, my stove. Everything's absolutely great. Um, and I'll swing you around and I'll just show you one of the modifications that I've done it in the back, which is really gonna make things a lot easier as far as outdoor cooking's concerned and having some workspace. So I'll uh, I'll have a cupper and then I'll show you this. So what I've done, guys, is I've manufactured a platform which sits underneath here and it's got a little hammock and I've got a pull-out unit which will be quite, that's actually quite strong and that's going to give us a nice bit of work surface. Yeah, there we go. I think what I will do is probably put something on the bottom. It's not too bad, there's a little bit of play but basically it's all right exactly as it is, more than usable. That's 5.8 kilograms, um, the, power, the power unit. But I think what I will do is I'll put an adjustable leg on the bottom and that, that will give it absolute rigidity. But it gives us extra surface space, which is going to be ideal for outdoor cooking. And by the time I get the, in, the internal units all sorted out, absolutely spot on. 
Um, and in actual fact, depending on the terrain, I could even attach another kind of table which goes lengthwise, which might give us like two, like an L-shaped kind of surface. But um, that's absolutely spot on that, like I'm really, really pleased with it. Three quarter inch ply, um, and uh, just got the jigsaw and just cut it all out. I'll put a picture on screen now so you can see what it looks like without all the bedding in and what have you. All right, spot on, fantastic. Well, that took an interesting turn. <laughs> the wind got up mega windy and uh, one of the suction cups gave way and the top just basically came flying off. <laughs> I need to modify it a little bit, uh, but that's not a problem at all. I'll probably just, um, I've taken it down for the time being because it was absolutely lashing down. Uh, so I thought, right, I'll just stuff it in the car and then I'll sort it out later on. If I'm wanting to go outside, I might, I might not. There's a big weather front coming in. I just thought I would come and have a little bit of a wander around. This is Megat Reservoir, and um, it's got loads of history. Uh, the Cry of the Hunt, there's a big uh, bit of information here. It used to be a royal hunting ground, and um, the royals used to come here and slaughter, basically slaughter, that's what it says. Loads of deer. Unbelievable, isn't it? And for what? Probably the deer weren't even used for meat and outlet. That was just sport at the time, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, these towers were kind of fortified um, kind of areas, you know, to protect this particular area. Well, I just thought you might have found that a little bit interesting, a little bit of history of the area. Uh, Moffat, well, just outside of Moffat in the southern uplands. Uh, so I'm just going to have a wander back to the car. And uh, I might have a beer. I'll see how I feel. And um, think about tea, I've got a curry like I said earlier on, so I'm going to have me, uh, have me curry a bit later. It's about five o'clock at the minute, and it's cold, it's very cold, hence me Eskimo jumper. But um, be nice and warm in the car and comfortable, that's for sure. I've had a little bird, a little wagtail, come and uh, jump up at the window. He must be after some food, I'll give him some crisps. Well, for some reason, guys, it's uh, blowing an absolute hoolie up where the car is. I've just moved down by the reservoir here. So what I'm going to do is just set myself up the top here. <laughs> Saying that, the wind's just getting up there. And um, <clears throat> put a fire on, I think, in an ideal world. I think that's kind of what we're aiming for here. Let's see what, uh, what kind of height we're talking about. That'll probably do, won't it? Something like that. That's the spirit. So, I right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get this thing in place, and then the idea is I'm gonna sit and chill out. Well, this was just about what I was aiming for. It's blowing a hoolie up at the top where the car is. Well, it's nice and calm down here. But I've put the tarp up um, and it's nice and taut. And I've got the fire going. I'm looking out over the, over the reservoir here or lock, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to have a couple of beers. I'm just going to sit and just soak up this prescription nature. Honestly, the sound of the running water, I, do, I doubt this will pick it up because it's got a muffler on. And the warmth which is coming up from this fire. 
hitting the top and then coming back towards us is absolutely tremendous. Hard to beat, guys. Fantastic. Well guys, it's tea time, eventually. Uh, what I've done is, um, it was windy as out up there, so I've set the top up down here, as you know. Um, and thankfully, I've just been back up the car, and it is absolutely blowing a gale up there. But uh, but it's calm down here, so I've got me uh, chicken curry on the go. That's gonna be tea sorted out. I'm gonna eat that um, as soon as it's done. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna head back to the car. I'm gonna hunker down for the night. So guys, I'm gonna love you and leave you for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the video so far, and uh, I'll see you in the morning. I've got some lawn sausage. We're in Scotland. It's the law. It's as simple as that. So um, I it's gonna be a good night and a good bless from me. I'll see you guys in the morning. Oh, morning folks, welcome to another day in the Southern Uplands. Um, I don't know if you can pick up, I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but um, the wind, oh my god, absolutely blowing a gale and it's been pissing down heavy. <laughs> About four o'clock it woke us up and uh, it's been all noisy, I haven't really been back to sleep since to be honest. Oh dear me. I'm going to get myself a coffee, get myself sorted, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself out of Dodge. Quite an elevated position here where I am, uh, the car's shaking around here, um, and I'm going to get myself further down the valley and uh, see if I can get myself a secluded spot and get a bit of breakfast on the go. I've got some lawn sausage. Fantastic. There's the uh, AA box I was telling you about. Um, <coughs> it's, a, uh, it's a listed building, this. Um, it's a building of historical significance here in the area. I've just come down on the lowlands a little bit there. Um, it is less windy, uh, but not much. I'm in a secluded spot here, mind you. And um, it's just been absolutely lashing it down. Absolutely lashing it down. Uh, the drive down was really, really nice, actually. But it's very, very murky. As you can see, the weather's not great at all. So I was going to make myself a... Hopefully the weather was going to pick up and I was going to make myself a lawn sausage sandwich. But you know what? I think I'm just going to nip down into Moffat and, um, and just treat myself to a breakfast, I think. Um, it'll be warm and dry and I can get myself a nice coffee and a lawn sandwich. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. As much as I've enjoyed making it, it was a fantastic night last night, sitting out in front of that fire, underneath the tarp, and just having a good night's sleep in the car, uh, making up some nice nice dinner and everything. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Um, if you're liking this type of stuff, the car camping content and stuff like that, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe to keep up with the uh, with the episodes, and uh, send us a comment. I read and, I read and respond. To, uh, to all all comments as well. There's some great, great comments from people and I really appreciate people watching and, uh, and taking, the time to, uh, taking the time to leave some fantastic comments. So thanks very much, guys. Right before this rain starts, I'm going to jump in the Battlestar Galactica 
Uh, incidentally, there was some technical problems with it. Uh, something to do with the uh, fuel injection system. Wire and harness or whatever. Anyway, Double D has worked. He's, my, he's literally a magician. Thanks again, Dan. Top man, love you, mate. Absolutely top class. So anyway, guys, I'm going to take the opportunity to say, you know what's coming. Get up off the settee. Get away from the TV and the newspaper and the radio and Facebook and all the doom and gloom that's going on. Get yourself out and soak up some prescription nature. <laughs> Just like this. Even if it's pissing down, it doesn't make any difference. I hate get me hair wet. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I hope to see you on the next Yonder Mountain Adventure. Bye for now.